Welcome back to Square Off. Arizonans are getting shots in the arms at an impressive rate. COVID vaccinations are rapidly expanding, but there's one vulnerable group that keeps getting bumped farther back in line, and it's hard to understand why. People with disabilities, others with high-risk conditions, will have to wait longer for their shots. Joining us to explain what's going on, former Arizona Public Health Director Will Humble. He's also Dad Will Humble, whose son Luke has Down syndrome. Welcome back to Square Off. Morning, Bram. So tell us what Luke's life has been like over the last year as the pandemic has raged around him. Well, like, like many families, he really lost a lot of his social connectedness uh, because he's used to going to a day program um, you know, where he has lots of friends and they do really fun activities, but we had to pull him out of that program. And he did Zoom, you know, for many, many months, but it's just not the same as actually being in program and being with your friends. So that for him, I think, has been the biggest change, which is, of course, a change for the whole family. A change for the whole family, but, you know, his, uh, the fact that he has Down syndrome puts him at greater risk for COVID, he and others, at greater risk for COVID illness than uh, others face. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a study, a peer-reviewed study that's published that shows that folks with Down syndrome, after controlling for age and comorbid conditions and heart conditions and so forth, um, are at 10 times higher risk uh, for death if they get infected with COVID-19. So uh, yeah, it's a huge, in fact, it's, it's a bigger risk than being on chemotherapy. It was the, the top uh, condition that they tested in the study. So yeah, 10 times bigger risk is a lot. And we're talking about more than folks, vulnerable people, more than just folks with Down syndrome. Uh, people with other disabilities yeah. uh, have not been getting their shots. Right. Many states included people with disabilities in Category 1B prioritized so that they would have been vaccinated along with people 75 years and up or 65 years and up. Our state had them in Category 1C, which, and, and everyone was patiently waiting in line, you know, waiting for their turn. Um, and, you know, 1C is just around the corner, or at least was just around the corner. Uh, but then the decision that was made last week on Monday by Director Christ to go to strictly an age-based system, which, by the way, there's some merit to, um, puts all of the folks with disabilities, like Down syndrome, back at least several weeks that are under 55 years old because they're no longer 1C anymore. It's, you know, everyone is 55 and up. So there's this group of people with disabilities between 18 and 55 that were just itching to get the vaccine because they knew they were next. And now they have to wait for their age to get called. So it's kind of disappointing for a lot of us in the community because, you know, we've been patiently waiting for to get our loved ones vaccinated. And now we're back at the end of the line. And they face a higher risk than many of us who are now ahead of them in line. The interesting right. thing is the state knows about these folks because they're part of the state system, the state health care system, because of their disabilities. So why can't anything be done? Well, we've been trying for the, like the last month to do something about this. Um, the Arizona Center for Disability Law sent the governor a couple letters, Director Chris a, a couple letters. We can't get any attention. And it takes on more importance with this new age-based system because now they're, I mean, we wanted them in 1B. Now they're going to the back of the line. So here, this isn't going to break the bank in terms of vaccine allocation. We're talking about 16,000 people. That's all we're talking about. It would be so easy to solve. In fact, what they could do is just say, look, if you're an Altex member, that's the Arizona Long-Term Care Program member, it's part of access, uh, then you automatically qualify for the vaccine. And they could even make it a simpler you know, way of, of, of finding the vaccine by avoiding the state's website, sending them to a pharmacy, giving a, pa a password to get into the back end of the system, or just telling them they don't need an appointment. It's the easiest thing in the world to solve because we're only talking about 16,000 people. But these are 16 very vulnerable people that are part of our communities that matter. And it's just sad that they have to go to the back of the line. And they know that this is happening but still haven't taken any action. So um, maybe they'll watch this and change their mind. Who knows? Uh, let's hope. It is really hard to understand. Will, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks.